What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy Dan from Daft Previews, and I'm here once again to preview the upcoming slate on the Olympic basketball. We're looking at Puerto Rico versus Serbia and the USA versus South Sudan. Now, in my last video previewed a four game slate with a whole lot of picks, and we managed to cash out. So, it started off real well. We had one value play from each game, cashing in three out of the four of them. In the first one, we had Santi Aldama and Papa Nicolau. They made it rain for us in the Spain versus Greece matchup. Then in Australia versus Canada, we had Lander. He got cooking for us in the fourth. And Dylan Brooks, he hit a three pointer with the last few seconds to put us over to cash that bet. We also had Andreas Obst. We laddered him to four plus three pointers made. He did finish on three, but he did cash his over 1.5 three pointers made. And he hit the plus money play with three plus. So Batum was the main letdown versus Japan. Uh, we needed him for at least two three pointers to make a little bank. Uh, three would have been extraordinary, but he had the minutes, but the volume wasn't there. So overall, a very profitable day. ka -ching. For those of you who checked out my final picks on Winnable, that was a taste of the VIP experience. If you're interested in joining my VIP, I am running a promotion at the moment. It's exclusive to the OGs on YouTube who have supported me on the way. It's where I'll share all my bets from a wide range of sports. Currently, it's all Olympic basketball and MLB, but with WNBA close to returning, well, and NBA around the corner, it's going to get wild. So use the code OGDAF to get 75% off the next 12 months, whether you do it monthly, whether you do it yearly, discount remains the same. This is limited to the first 50 signups, though. Links for this are under the video below, and I'll put it in the pinned comment as well. Now, let's kick it off with Puerto Rico versus Serbia. Let's go. All right, so Serbia favorites in this game, 17 and a half point favorites to be exact. Quick recap on how these teams have performed so far. Puerto Rico, absolutely crushed by South Sudan. They lacked effort. They were destroyed inside. They were out hustled. Whereas for Serbia, they were blown off the park by the USA team. All, all that happened whilst the Joker was off the floor. For this particular game, Serbia will win, but for and against, it's going to be lingering in their mind after they got dominated against the US. They should absolutely dominate Puerto Rico because Puerto Rico are pretty soft inside and Serbia got some pretty big boys headed by Nikola Jokic. So in terms of player props, I want to start with Nikola Jokic, get my thoughts out on him. So his point sign in this game is up to 20.5. It's at minus 145. I saw that this did open a 19 and a half in some books, but you had to be very quick and get in very early for that. Now, Nikola Jokic should dominate. The aren't great for a straight bet, so for DFS players, it could be something to look at. He did score 20 against the US. Uh, if against going to be really important for Serbia, they need to dominate. I think Nikola Jokic um, needs to spearhead their offense. Doesn't often score 20-plus points playing for Serbia, but in a game like this, it's pretty valuable. The one thing I actually really like about these Olympics is they play to the very last second, whereas the last couple of minutes in an NBA game is pretty trash, but every possession means something. So even if there's a blowout, I don't think Nikola Jokic sees limited minutes. I still think he plays a full complement and he absolutely beasts it and racks up the points. So I do like the over. DFS, price, big chalkboard, whatever it is, uh, his over looks pretty good there. But for straight betting, you probably have to combine that with something if you want to get some real value to get it close to a double up. Now, the next... Um, thing I want to talk about with Nikola Jokic whilst we're talking about him is his rebound. So his rebound line's at 8.5, which is quite high, and it's at minus 180 as well. So I'm not overly excited by that. It is a high line, although the matchup is perfect. This Puerto Rico team got dominated by South Sudan on the boards. Serbia probably going to do even more damage. And look, Jokic, I do like his over in boards, but what I've done well at is avoiding a lot of these star players when their lines are so high. Um, for example, Giannis took his under in, against, um, who that was it? Not against Canada. Up against Spain, took his under in that cash because he, he was great, but that line was super high. And Nikola Jokic, I think his points and rebounds, he should go over. I'm not saying to bet the under. I'm just not sure how confident I can to take it. But there is another player who I think can take advantage of this matchup. Playing from Serbia... Uh, what's his name? Philip Petrusev. I hope I said that right. My Serbian and my pronunciations are terrible, but I do like his points and his rebound prop. If I had to say which one I like more, it would probably be his rebounds. And I think it's at 4.5. Yeah, and it's minus 115. So the odds are pretty good for that. Now, Philip Petrusev. Serbia have a massive rebound advantage in this game. I spoke about the Joker's line being a little bit too high for my liking. He did 
play he does play the third highest minutes for this Serbia team. Uh, he did it third highest minutes against USA and in their preparation games. He's covered this line of 4.5 rebounds in three out of his last five games. The games where he went under in his boards, USA and Australia, who are much better rebounding teams in Puerto Rico. Now, he's also covered this line of 7.5 points in three out of four preparation games. He averaged 12 points per game. Great matchup given the lack of size. So I do like uh, Philip recovery's points and his rebounds. Which one I ultimately bet on, I'm not sure yet, but that's definitely uh, the direction I'm heading in. Um, I'm most likely on one of those. Who knows, for a value play, I might even bet on both. But another player from Serbia to look at is Bogdan Bogdanovic. Now, his point signs at 17.5, and I'm leaning to the over in this one purely because he hasn't been shooting too well. Well, he didn't shoot well against the US. I think he was only two from six from deep, 50% from his two pointers. Uh, so map side in a game that's very important for Serbia. Um, about that game, that's pretty much what I'm looking at here. He does play the second most minutes behind Jokic. He is their leading scorer, believe it or not, um, throughout their prep games. Uh, him and Nikic pretty much neck and neck. So his line's three points lower than Nikola Jokic's. The matchup's probably not as easy, but it's not a difficult matchup for anybody on Serbia in this one. So yeah, I do like his over. Not sure how much though, but definitely one way that I'm thinking. And another look for Bogdanovic could be his rebounds as well. His rebound line, not available here on Bet365, but I think it's about 3.5 or 4.5. He had six rebounds against the US and we spoke about Puerto Rico. Not great rebounders, and they do take a lot of three-point shots. So long rebounds for guards, I think that could be a look at as well. Uh, who else is there in this bloody game? Uh, we've got a Jose Alvarado. So I wanted to take his unders, right? But looking at his numbers, he's produced quite well. Uh, 22 point game over his last three games. Uh, the dip injured in that last game, came back and continued to play, but this line's already started to drop. It's down to 18.5. I think this was at 19.5 when I looked at it last night. So people are definitely betting the unders for Jose Alvarado. And look, I honestly don't hate it. I think it's still a pretty good look. The problem is he plays really good for Puerto Rico and the volume's going to be there because I don't have too many players. Uh, but they do have one other player, which is Tremont Waters. Now he's a pick that I'm pretty confident I'm going to take. And that's his over 4.5 assists. The odds started to move already. Minus 155, though. So not the greatest for a straight bet. But for DFS, I think it's fantastic. Now, Tremont Waters saw 30 minutes in the opening game. Uh, he did take a, a volume of shots. 19 shots attempted in that last game for Puerto Rico versus South Sudan. Where, whereas in the preparation games, he only averaged seven shots per game. So I'm leaning the over in his assist for this one because he will see more minutes, 30 plus minutes for sure. I think the shot volume in the last game is a bit of an outlier and he should get back to diamond up. So hopefully those, those assists can happen here against Serbia. The other player, if you're looking at Puerto Rico, that's probably worth taking a look at is George Condit. Yeah, he's a seven footer. Um, rare to find these days, but a seven footer nonetheless. So... An unpopular pick that I'm thinking of taking is his under 8.5 points. It is going to be a bit of a sweat because given Serbia's size, they're going to need him out there as much as they can. Uh, they do have Romero on the bench, I think he's a seven-footer as well. So I think he's going to get the minutes. So it's a bit risky taking the 8.5 points. He did score 13 points in the opener against South Sudan. In that game, he only attempted six shots and he made all six of them. So I don't think he's going to shoot 100% from the field here against Serbia. I also don't think he gets six shots off. So he's also not a great free throw shooter. I think he's about 50%. Uh, Serbia, they have a few seven-footers. Uh, Nikola Jokic, he's almost seven-foot, but uh, Petrusev, seven-footer as well. Um, it's going to be difficult for him to get those points on the inside. The problem there is that might contradict with my Tremont Waters assist play, but who knows? We'll, we'll see where I land, but this is where my mind's at. Um, he's also gone under this. George Condit got under 8.5 points in all four preparation games for this Olympics. So uh, that's one that I'm leaning. Another way you could look at for George Condit is on the rebound side, 5.5 boards. We know Puerto Rico, not a great rebounding team, but he is their best rebounder. It's going to be vital for him to get some sort of rebounding happening. Um, but a minus 140, yeah, I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, there, there could be a George Condon play. That's all I'm going to say. Um, let's jump to the next one. USA versus South Sudan. 
So South Sudan, they had their first win in in the Olympics against Puerto Rico. Um, they're the Cinderella story, if anything. If you're not supporting any of the team in the Olympics, you're probably supporting South Sudan to get some wins. There was a scrappy game, but they got it done. A lot of effort and a lot of hustle. Whereas USA, they beat the brakes off Serbia. KD reminded the world that he's the best scorer on this USA team. Uh, these teams actually played in the preparation game. South Sudan, they only lost by one to the US. They were leading the majority of that game. The spread is at 29 and a half points. The spread for the first game when these guys matched up was about 43 points. So it's come down quite a bit given how well South Sudan has played. But keep in mind that USA were fucking around with a lot of lineups and it almost cost them the game. So a lot of people are predicting them to the US to to pump and i don't know if i can take them at 29.5 i looked at totals to and fro and i couldn't really land on anything but let's talk about some player props and see what's standing out to us the first one um looking at some of these south Sudanese boys uh one that caught my attention is this guy mariel shayok now his point signs at 14.5 you'll get rid of this 14.5 so he only scored 15 points against puerto rico right? Easy matchup, only scored 15, but that's actually his lowest total in quite some time for international ball. In the last two prep games, he scored 27 and 25 points. One of those games was against the USA. Now, he's a high volume three-point shooter. I assume here that South Sudan are going to be chasing some points in this game. He also, well, this is partly the risk, but it could be a reason why you take it, is the last time these guys matched up with the USA, this guy, Marial Shiok, shot six, six from 12 from deep against the USA. So he absolutely scorched them. The concern here is, will the USA let that happen again? So that's the, that's the risk in this play. He's got the history of being a great performer for this team and this country. He's got it done against the USA before, but uh, can he do it again? That's the only question mark going on in my mind. The other play I wanted to look through is... When you're Gabriel, now this is a player that I'm probably most likely going to take, and it's his over 6.5 rebounds, so it's at minus 115. Now, he's covered this line in three out of his last five international games. He had nine rebounds in the opener against Puerto Rico. Now, when these teams last matched up, he only had six rebounds against USA in that prep game, although that was a pretty high-scoring game. South Sudan, they shot the ball a lot better than anybody expected him to. So, so why do I like this pay? Well, he gets 40% of his rebounds on the offensive end. I don't expect South Sudan to shoot as well as they did last time, which should give him more opportunities to hustle some boards for us. So he's no stranger to a lot of these guys in the US. He's a fringe NBA player, but he does get to play against this caliber of talent every single day. So I don't think he'll be overawed by the situation. He should get about 20 minutes. And if he's getting 20 minutes and South Sudan are throwing up some more bricks, I think when you and Gabriel can get over. If you can bet just his uh, offensive rebounding prop, I think that could be a great look as well. It'd probably be at three, 3.5. Um, but yeah, I'm looking with Gabriel to get some boards. His points I'm a bit on the fence about. He can get it done. And he scored 10 in the opener. But yeah, anyone from the Sudan team could really score. So yeah, I'm not confident in that, but I'll probably lean to the over. Heading over to some of the guys from the US. Now, the King, he had a great game um, in the over against Serbia. Points, rebounds, assists, and a lot of turnovers. Now, for those of you who are new to watching this, I'm not a big LeBron fan. I can appreciate his greatness, but he's an absolute joke in my opinion. So I always look to take an under when I can. And it's not because I'm a, not because I dislike LeBron James. It's honestly because his lines are very inflated because of how popular he, he is. And there could be some opportunities there. When I scoured the market, he's got lines of 5.5 rebounds, 6.5 assists. So I'd be looking at either he's under an assist. That's one way that I'd be thinking. So he's only exceeded the assist line in one out of his last five games. That's 6.5. I think that last game against South Sudan, he had six assists. But the correlation to that, I'm looking at look taking the over in his turnovers, 2.5 turnovers. Um, the turnovers are minus 135. And on the turnovers, it's pretty much he's averaged three turnovers per game over his last five international games. Uh, six turnovers last game against Serbia. So he was just throwing that thing around. Uh, he also had four turnovers in his last matchup against South Sudan. It could be a correlated play, this one. If he's not getting the assist but forcing the passes, that could be more turnovers. He could take them both for plus 200. Who knows? We'll see where I land. But that's my first thoughts on LeBron James. Can't take his rebounds. Can't take his points either way. But 
someone that I probably can can convince myself to take, talking about points, is Drew Holiday. So his point signs at 7.5. Now, when this team was selected, Drew Holiday was highlighted as the player that didn't belong. Now, despite this, he's been consistent scoring the ball. He's going to get his minutes because of his defense. He hasn't been shy taking his opportunities to score. So he's covered this line in four straight international games, and he just recorded 15 points in the opener against Serbia. He doesn't shoot a high volume of shots, but his percentages are quite high. And at a line of 7.5, you technically just need him to make four baskets, but he does take a lot of threes. Realistically, if he's making some threes, he only needs to make, I'd say, three shots in total if he's gonna if he's guaranteed to make one. Well, he's not guaranteed, no such thing, but uh, pretty confident he makes one three-pointer, which means he probably only needs three total field goals in order to cover 7.5 points. So I do like Drew Holiday and his points. Um, the other player I do like is Anthony Davis, and I don't mind his rebounds here. 8.5 rebounds. It's a plus money play, plus 125. Uh, the line has been bumped, though. This was at 7.5 when I checked it yesterday. Um, I'm pretty sure on a lot of those DFS apps, you can probably get him for 8, which I think is great value. Um, but even at 8.5, it's a plus money play. He averaged 9.8 rebounds in only 18 minutes through the prep games. I expect him to get at least 20 minutes in this game. He recorded 11 rebounds in their last matchup against South Sudan. He played 21 minutes in that game. Uh, and in the game, this Sudanese team shot the ball really well. So the script in my mind is that this Sudanese team probably isn't going to score another 100 points against the U.S. They're not going to shoot as well, which means there's going to be more op rebound opportunities thanks to USA improving their defense in this game because this shit really matters. Um, but yeah, like Anthony Davis' boards, it is a plus money look. Outside of that, when I did my research, nothing really screamed out to me. Um, a lot of these lines you could say are sharp. I think one thing that came to mind is this Jason Tatum stuff. A lot of news around him not getting any minutes. Kerr said he will have his opportunity at some point in the future. Is that today? Does that mean the under 15.5 points for Kevin Durant is a play? It's honestly one thing I thought about. He's got the highest line tied with LeBron for the US team. He did just smoke them in, smoke it in the last game, coming back off an injury, played 23 minutes. Um, do they show the love here? Does Jason Tatum get more time or does he continue to be banished to the bench? So I'm not too sure about that. We'll see. I'm going to watch some other cappers when they finally release some stuff or read a few articles, see if anybody has any goss. There's no news around the rotations for the US. I also noticed that there's no uh, Joel Embiid in some markets of Bet365. He's someone who had been fa fading in the past, but I think the AD over, maybe over in his points and his rebounds could be a good look. Anthony Edwards, somewhat consistent. Um, so yeah, the US is tough. They're, they're littered with stars. You don't know who's going to get minutes and opportunities. So it's tough to find an edge when they play, especially they can be really dominant, just fuck the whole game up, right? So, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. I'm going to edit this thing, get it out to you guys. And whilst that's all happening, I'll be finalizing my set of plays. Um, so be sure to check out my Winnable. Um, there's links to that below. I'll have a free version of Winnable anyway where I'll put free picks up. But if you want the full VIP experience like we did yesterday, you got to sign up for that one. But the good thing is 75% off for you, my OG viewers on YouTube. I'm not advertising that anywhere else whether you do the yearly plan or do it by monthly, whatever it is, um, you'll get set. You've got to use the code GDAFT. So hopefully you guys, you got, hopefully you guys are fucking with this video and a lot of my thoughts and my opinions. Let me know in the comment section. A lot of you guys are staying close to the Olympics, especially these guys who aren't American. You might have a view on them. So I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comment section below. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.